Tim tóc ba.
we bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity for us to come live this particular evening. We bless the name of the Lord. It is always a wonderful thing in the sight of the Lord to be able to dig deep into the word of the Lord. Like we, we did last week, power, the power of we in the church. I'm very sure you are so elevated. You really want to know more about it and you must have your question. I welcome you to this particular channel today and thank God for your life. Thank God that you are present. Thank God you have the chance in order to give, to hear the word of the Lord. You know, it's always good to learn at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I bless the name of the Lord for this particular moment. I know you're going to be blessed today. And uh, just the few questions we're going to take, we are going to enjoy it to the maximum today by special grace of God. My name is Demi Sola Oluwa Yemeka, and by special grace of God, I'm the host of Demi O Share and Care, where we come together to discuss problems that are facing Christians every day. There are so many things we shy away from the church that we don't want to discuss. But on this particular channel, we're free. We'll be able to talk about it. We'll be able to attack it. We'll be able to treat it and from the Bible, the Word of God. So without wasting time, brethren, I want to bring up my guests. You saw them last week, but all the same, I will quickly do a small introduction so that people that are here for the first time will be able to see that they are there for, you know, for us to be, to be used. For, for God to use them mightily. And um, without wasting time, I want to bring up our mommy. Uh, she's a nurse. And also, I told you last week, she, she's the owner of a restaurant in Orlando. Uh, they, they call the uh, restaurant flavored Nigerian restaurant. I will check her out. You will, you will not regret. You, you can see different type of food that she always engaged with. So please patronize her. She's in Orlando. No matter where you are, you can do it online, and uh, she she will have a way of sending it to you. God bless you, Mrs. Bello. You're welcome. Thank to the you. Team. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. God Very bless you. And I Thank want you. to bring up my father as well. Um, I already told you this: my father and the Lord, my brother, my you know, is just the, the the Lord has really blessed me so much through him. And I have the privilege, you know, by, by special grace of God, he was a, a married counselor for 15 years. We were work, we were doing it together. And I know so many people were blessed during that time. And now he's the senior pastor and regional coordinator site the description of MFM in Abuja. So right from Nigeria, is the one, uh, you know, joining us right now. I have the privilege of introducing to us Pastor Bolani Wayusu. God bless you, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. We, without wasting time, uh, like, like we you know. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. sir. <laughs> you muted, yes, sir. Okay. Um, like you know, this is a Christian channel. We always start with the Lord. I cannot do anything without him. I believe with him we can do all things. So we are going to pray quickly. I uh, will ask uh, Mommy Bello to give us a short prayer as we start the opening today. Let's go. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the gathering of today. We thank you because you honor yourself in the gathering of your children. Father, Lord, as we commence in this service, Father, Lord, come and be with us. Amen. Come and give us the wisdom, O Lord, the knowledge, O Lord, the understanding of you, O Lord. Father, everyone that on this program today, let, it, let us help help every one of us, O oh Lord, to be able to attain what you want us to attain in every day of our life. Let us live to your, help us to live to your expectation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, the, 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 the host of this uh, program, we commit unto the heaven hand, give her the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to be able to proceed in your work and your work alone. We Amen. thank you, O Lord. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, O Lord, we are praying. Amen. Thank you Amen. very much, Father. Without wasting time, we want to go and dig all the questions that, you know, we already put down. And, uh, and I'm very sure at the end of the day, it will help a lot of people. Like I said before I read any of the questions, just bear in mind that being a church member, you have decided to go and worship the Lord in truth and in holiness. And that is your focus. But do you know there are so many people, they come to church for different diverse of things. 
and it is now for you to determine what the, what am I in the church for? Is it to do fashion prayer? Is it to criticize the pastor? Is it to see my friend? Is it to connect business? So many diverse mm -hmm. of things, so many. So, but all the same today, by special grace of God, the few questions we're going to deal with, um, at least it be able to show, show a, a lot about what we mean by the power of we, the we that is together, we'll be able to achieve a lot of things. If yes. this is your first time of coming to this particular channel, it is good for you to subscribe. And the reason why you need to subscribe is that anytime we put our videos on or we go live like this, you don't need to be reminded again, YouTube will send a message to you. There is no thing to harm you concerning subscribing. So if you can just subscribe, and if you like the video as we go on, press the like button. And if you have any comments as well as we go on, maybe you don't have the opportunity of talking, you know, you can just put your comment there and we will appreciate it. Because a lot of people come in there to read all your comments. And do you know you are blessing somebody? We're doing the work of the Lord together. And the reward is from heaven. So be part of it. The first question we are going, uh, that we want to treat today, um, even though it might not be um, deeper, but at least we'll be able to tell you about it. Um, the first one I'm going to read from here is, is it a good thing for pastor or leaders to have special people in this preference to in the church? Even amongst children at home, this thing happens. Even in the church of God, it happens. But as a child of God, is it right for our pastor to have pre preference to certain people that no matter how their case come, they will be treated, you know, separately, nicely? Is that not going to cause a lot of things in the church? I will give this question to my daddy, Pastor Bolarinwa Yusuf, because he's a pastor. So, yeah, dig it out. Sir. Uh, Okay, um, I think he, he loves the battle. Okay, let me give it to uh, Mommy Bello. You can deal with the question as it comes in back. Let, let's hear from you. What do you think? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, I'll all say that uh, it, it's not good. Even among anything that we do, but if we literally, mm -hmm. if we want to look at it, uh, there is no way you will have two things and you love them equally. There is no way. In the church of God, it depends on how you see yourself. Sometimes it's not like the pastor likes somebody more than myself. It is the way I see the things of God. It is the way I position myself in the church. Really, the pastors, some pastors have preference, which is not right. But they might not see it as a preference from their own side of view. That is why it's so good to be open in church. Instead of uh, calling somebody to express your mind about how you feel about something, in my own uh, way, in my own reasoning, I'll prefer to... Uh, address the issue with the person that is, you know, directly connected with me. Mm -hmm. Because I am a member of the church too. So, and I have my voice, I'm supposed to be heard. But if you say something and there is nothing done about it, then you can say, oh, there's a preference. But sometimes we want something, but we don't say it out. We see something, but we don't say it. If we don't say it, then there's nobody to be blamed but ourselves. That's why I said in the beginning, like, it depends on how you see yourself in the church. If you go to church and feel it's their church, our pastor and some people, no. Step up and ask. Express your feelings. And by so doing, sometimes when we speak of, then maybe there's going to be an explanation or something, something. But I don't believe in being quiet and not saying something. If you have, uh, if you say something about an issue that bothers your mind, then let the church, ad uh, the pastor address it. Let people that are in, in uh, it, like the elders or something, the church executive, let them address the issue. 
But by the time I call my sister to express myself, there is no way she will relate the same, uh, mm -hmm. what I said to her. There is no way for her to relate it and it will be complete. If it's not minus, it's going to be plus. You understand me, ma? If it's not always good to call a third party to express your feelings about anything that is going on wrong, that you feel is going wrong in the church. Praise yeah. the Lord. Thank you very much. Uh, our daddy is back. Yes, sir. Uh, are you hearing me, sir? Okay. Um, well, actually, we have more questions than this, but uh, Miss Bello already knocked the thing on the head. Because it's just like communication problem in the church. Thanks. When you have yes. problems and you don't you don't communicate, yes, you don't you, yes, sir. And you are pretending as if oh everything is okay. Meanwhile, you are not seeing it, and that is why you are doing some reactions in the church. So without um, let, let, let me just ask Pastor to give his own. Is it a good thing, sir, for pastors or leaders to have special people he gives preference to in the church? That's the question. Um, the question to me is a two-edged sword. Hmm. On the face value, it is not good to have preference in the church. Every member should be treated alike. Hmm. But you will realize that why it is true members should be treated alike, some people are bound to share your vision and mm. they are ready to go along with you more than others. Mm. And once that situation arises in an organization, including the church, we are human beings, there is every tendency that the, the, those who follow your vision, those who make you to achieve your goal at the appropriate time, mm -hmm. you are likely to have preference, uh, preferences preferences for them. In fact, the Apostle Paul in the Bible made us to realize that some are more privileged, even in the body of Christ, than the others. And I want to believe that what he said was correct, because when Jesus Christ was on this earth, among his 12 disciples, there were some that were closer to him than the others. And it can quickly be inferred that he had preferences for those people. Why? Because they knew what he wanted at any point in time, more than the others. Mm -hmm. You can remember, among the 12, there were three selected. Among these three selected again, there was another one that is preferred, popularly known as John the Beloved. What is so special in John the Beloved, in, in John the Beloved, that could not be found in Peter? All right? Mm -hmm. You will realize, if you search the Bible very well, there was never a time that John said anything that he did not do. Mm -hmm. But uh, Peter, on the other hand, out of emotion, he could say things that at the end of the day he will not be able to do. If you go back to the book of John, chapter 6, verse 67, when God, when Jesus Christ was asking them, Will you also go away? He answered on behalf of the disciples that mm -hmm. to whom shall we go? Mm -hmm. Okay, he was giving his allegiance to Jesus Christ that he will not go to any other place. But what happened when Jesus Christ died and resurrected? Within the period of 40 days that Jesus was coming and going, remember Peter was the first that said, let us go and fish him. Okay? We, up to today, we still realize the book of books in the Bible, popularly called the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. was not shown to Peter. All right? Rather, it was shown to John the Beloved. When Jesus was on the cross, he did not hand over his mother to any other disciple but John the Beloved. Mm -hmm. All right. So there must be something special in John the Beloved that was not found in Peter. And when you look at the, at the history 
of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ himself, Jesus was living with Peter. It was because when you go to Jerusalem and you find out, they will show you that this is Peter's house and Jesus was living with him there in Galilee. He did not live with John the Beloved. But there was something specific in John the Beloved. So on the face value, it is not good to have special preference for members of the church. However, when you look deep into it, those members that make you to achieve your goal at any point in time, mm -hmm. there is every likelihood that you have preference for them. That is my explanation. Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, uh, the way I see it, you, uh, the two of you are just to, you are right. Because it's just like home. There is no way, it, you know, even in the family, you will see a child that immediately you say something, it will, it will do it. And you see yeah. another one, when you say something, it will drag. And that does not mean the parents did not love them, but it's also in the church. At least, like mm -hmm. what uh, Daddy said, that there are some things that before, you know, they make the vision of the pastor come to reality. Automatically, yeah. the pastor will go nearer those people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, no, no, that Mr. Bello said something last week that what about when, when they ask you to do something, you complain on, on everything. Meanwhile, at your work, you don't complain. But when the pastor tells you to do something, it is then you say, oh, you didn't say it well. You should have even put a evangelist in front of my name. Uh, you, you don't you know the type of person I am. You know, we need to compromise with each other on this particular point. And I know this particular question will be able to help a lot of people to do more things for the Lord. Don't expect the reward from man. Expect the reward from God. And when you do that, you don't even look at anything, you know, preference or no preference. God bless you. Let's go to the second one. Uh, like I said, we are going to be just smart and uh, how can leaders support the less privileged without announcing it? How can leaders support the less privileged without making it public, announcing their private affairs? You know, at times, some, maybe a particular sister or brother needs help. Uh, is it right for a pastor to announce it or to make it in another way of doing things? I will be calling uh, Mommy Bello short and to the point. Is it good for, uh, for them to pronounce it? Yeah. Uh, my boss, uh, some of the time, uh, the, the leaders we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, let me put it this way. If we go to the pastor, like we have an issue, it's not all the time that the pastor can, can help you with the, with the issue. He has to have the people, like uh, is the, the committee, the church committee, is going to announce it among the church committee. Let's say, for example, somebody is going having a challenge about their rent. If it's easy for the pastor to just bring out money from his pocket to, to help the member, I'm sure he's going to do it. But what about the situation whereby the pastor has no capacity to help at that point in time? What do you want him to do? Definitely, he will share with the uh, with the a church executive. This is what uh, uh, mis uh, this person is going through, and I don't know if it's right to mention the name at that point or just raise the money or raise the assistance or do what he's supposed to do without letting anybody know. And and exactly what I'm trying to talk about, I think last week about positioning yourself as a member of the church. Like you belong to the church and not seeing yourself as is their church, you know, in situation. The church is becoming a place where uh, that is being uh, that is hostile for people to share even testimony. People are afraid to talk about what is wrong with them. People are afraid to share their problem in the church. Where, where do we want to go to when there is a problem? We, we believe in coming to church. But if you feel challenged to go to your pastor or to, uh, you know, to seek for help in a church, maybe you don't, you are not supposed to be in that church. And as in the leaders helping or the church, a pastor helping, it's not to mock the person sometimes. And I, be, I can't, I'm not going to say sometimes. 
it's not to mock the person. It's, it's a way of uh, asking for help too from the members, from the, the, from the people. You know, sometimes I believe their hands are tight. Mm -hmm. If you tell me I need something, I, but I cannot afford it at that time, what do you want me to do? I have executives. I have people that are, you know, the church committee. But it's unfortunate that uh, sometimes people that are elders are, or members of the committee, they don't know the reason why they are in the post in the first place. If you are a man in the committee of the church, I'm not too sure, like, you are supposed to share whatever goes on in the committee with your wife when you get home. Mm -hmm. Or if you are a woman, for you to share whatever goes on in the committee with your husband, if he's not a member of that committee, I don't think he's supposed to know what goes on in the committee. Awesome. And this happens with pastors too. When the, 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 a problem arises in a family, let's say maybe a family is going through challenge, uh, the pastor went there to, you know, to appeal uh, to the couple or something, and he got home and shared whatever is going on with them. The pastor might not even know the wife has called somebody else to, to share what he went to do in the person's home. That's and before you know it, the pastor is going to be looking like a laughing stock. It's mm. going to be a, like a person that is not even uh, okay to lead a church. Mm -hmm. May God help every one of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Pastor, uh, actually, all the questions today is directed to Pastor. So all we say, we too, we are in the church. So we have the power to say something. This is very, very peculiar all the time. And uh, some you just see some people, oh, I told Pastor about something. I had it from somewhere. And I heard it outside, uh, yes. I had it somewhere. I, it, it can scatter people. And that is why we are treating this particular question. So without wasting time, Pastor, what do you have to say about it? If I will go to the next question. Uh, thank you very much for bringing out this question. And um, over and over again, it keeps on uh, appearing in the church. And that when it is not properly handled, a church may continue to lose its members. Mm. Now, I will look at you from the angle of number one. How can leaders support the less privileged without making it public? Mm -hmm. There must be genuine love. There must be genuine love from top, from, uh, from top to the bottom. And when I say genuine love, meaning that leaders themselves will be seeking to help without being recognized. That's number one, genuine love. love. Number two is the pastor in charge of the church may also set up some groups in the church. Like, for example, some churches like the one that I attend. We do have we care group. We also have those that care for the needy. The needy, many a times, they they are not made public. They are only well known by the pastors himself. Mm -hmm. So those who are privileged in the church from time to time, they, they send in what they have to the church. And because the pastor knows them, many a times those people who are supporting the privileged are not even known by them at all. So they are moved by the love I mentioned at the, at the beginning to put in what they can use to support members. And from time to time, the pastor of the church or whomever he designates will share those things with the privilege, that with the underprivileged. That is uh, number two. Number three is that we have some people that have the love of brethren at heart. Often time, will I even say, I don't want to mention myself and my family. 
there are times we identify what could be the need of members without letting them know. But we know that this area is what is uh, what, where they are lacking. Either of us that have opportunity at that time without anybody knowing, we arise and help. And there are some there are so many members like that in the church that do that. There are times, even if we if three of us should stand together and you are giving money to the second person. The third person may not know. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we mean by helping the underprivileged without making it public. We are aware of some people because their reward is here, not in heaven. They will start saying it in the public. I am the one that paid her rent. I'm the one that paid the school fees. Mm -hmm. Automatically, according to the word of God. Jesus Christ said it. Whatever you might have done, you have taken your reward here. Not it's not recognized in heaven. Uh -huh. so the best way is the little you can do. Do it and do not wait for people to recognize you or to even praise you. Some people will even wait and say, what I did for you yesterday, you did not appreciate. If such a fellow is in the church as a leader, that appreciation he wants or she wants, we also deny him or her the reward in heaven. I want to end this question by saying the word of God admonizes us that we should not be weary in well doing uh -huh. because a time will come when we will receive the reward. I paraphrase that verse in the Bible. So, if we have at the back, if we have that mind at the back of our mind, whatever mm -hmm. God empowers us to do for anybody, we will not want it to be announced at all. The bottom line, the bottom line is there the brotherly law. And in the brotherly law, there will be sacrificial giving without making announcements. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a very big point because at times some people they want to make sure everybody knows. Oh, I'm the one. Oh, uh, they will even say it directly. They'll say, "Oh, you see, I'm even tired. I, what happened? Oh, I just I just went to the bank to collect money for." Meanwhile, he doesn't want anybody to say. But before you know it, <laughs> oh, you know I'm tired. I went to the bank to collect. What did you call? Oh, to collect money, you. Can you hear? You know they are having problems with the accommodation. Oh, mm -hmm. I ask you to say that there are so okay. many things to make sure that we have to keep our mouth shut. You know, and when the Bible encourages us that when you give, let the let, let the other hand not even know what you are doing. So it's always good to do that. And I'm very sure you people hearing me, you be able to grab something from what we have just discussed. I'm going to skip. Quite, we have two more questions, and uh, we want to dish it out. At least I'm very sure you are able to get the answer to the question that we mentioned because we don't want to keep long today and uh, the next one i'm going to read is the um one of we work very important because i know it's always happening when you hear a rumor about a member what should be the right approach there is always rumor 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 um the choir master is having an affair with somebody the, the pastor's child is doing one one thing or the other rumor how do we get rid of it because it's a it's a big root of tearing people apart and when people hear something that was said on behalf of them and they just react by leaving the church that is what i mean so how do we come you know how do we tackle with this i really want us to hit it so that um Okay, let's start with uh, Mommy Bello. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, there will always be rumors in the church. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when you hear something, if you, for somebody to tell you about something that is going on, even if you don't know about it, you have not heard about it, Take it to your pastor. If you cannot ask the person, because the person telling you about something, it's not going to give you the, the, the real story. 
Don't be a mouthpiece to somebody else. When things are going wrong or, or, or on in the church sometimes, I always say like the, the pastors are always the, the last people to know or hear about it. But we can stop to, uh, you know, to, to, to carry rumor around by visiting the source. This is my church. This is my a, a fellow member of the church. This is my place of worship. If you really don't want anything to go wrong that place, then you need to go to the right authority in the church. There is a reason why we have elders in the church. There is a reason why there is a pastor in the church. If something, let's say for example, uh, maybe I'll share, this is, this is something that really happened in, a, in one of our churches. There's this boy with a dreadlock on his head. Uh, somebody approached him and, you know, I, I'll say disrespect him as we, the word we use here. So where we come from, we don't see it as a disrespect. We see it as, oh, I'm talking to a, uh, a, 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 a somebody that I'm older than. But what, oh, when I called the guy, I spoke to him when he reported to me. I said, uh, why, uh, what happened? We are not more coming to the church. He said, oh, one person stopped me that I have dread drug on my head. He said that uh, when he was talking to him, somebody said, hey, I wanted even, somebody passed by and said, ah, I wanted to even call him. Da, 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 da. Why do you keep it? And he made mention to me, but that somebody else in the church son had dreadlock. Was he addressed the same way they addressed him? And I, I really, I don't worship there, but the guy is very, was very, very close to me. So I felt somehow that this is where, like, uh, things start going on little by little that accumulates and get to a point where people cannot tolerate no more and they leave the church. Um, if this thing is not right, don't let us see it to be right for somebody else. If this is the way and manner that I feel I should act in the church, if it's not right, I want to be oppressed like you address somebody else too. When uh, there is a Yoruba added that says that if you're doing wrong, you know you are doing wrong. But because of your privilege, sometimes you feel that nobody can come to you. In a situation like that, See, the first thing they see is, is it because I'm less privileged? Why is this problem not addressed? It be, it, we spread rumors around the church. Things start going on. But I'm not going to tell you that. Sometimes the pastors or the people in place did not see that issue. But they won't address it when it's supposed to be addressed. Because the, the person, because of the person in question. If we keep adding to that, it, the church is not going to be a, a, a suitable place for anybody. Hmm. Thank you. We cannot stop rumors. But let people see you, like I'm talking about the pastor, as, a, a, as somebody that doesn't lie. That somebody that uh, 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 can address issues when it arises, when it happens one, two, three times, like this is the issue the pastor heard about it, he addressed it. They will know you as a no-go area. Nobody is going to come to you with lies. Don't don't tolerate people. Don't let people come to you with lies. Don't let people come to you with things you don't want to talk about. Me, thank you, Lagbaja. But then don't talk about the Lagbaja. These are things that are very, very common in the church. These mm. are things that are ruining the church. It's mm. ruining people's life, relationship with church, relationship with one another in the church. Thank I you. don't think, and I don't know if it can stop, but if we keep talking about it, maybe there's going to be changes. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. You know, um,
one of my ministers just said something one day. He said, when somebody comes to you and tell you a particular thing that is, oh, um, I, I don't want you to tell anybody, but you know, this is it. Mm. Once he tells you that, know that he will, he will be the one to, even to everything you say, he is going to transfer it again in another realm. Mm. So that is mm. always good for us to avoid people that say, oh, oh, have you, have you heard? When you hear people say, have you heard, run away. Because the beginning is just a, a mere a mere leo. And before you know it, they leo into you and say, Oh, it's this evangelist that said that. Meanwhile, he was the one that brought the thing. But before because you listen and uh you want to hear more, then you will hear more. So God help us. Pastor, what do you have to say before we go to the last question? Thank you very much, uh, sister um, Abelo. You really try, and I think. You've said a lot, and it's exactly how it should be. Uh, the few things that uh, I want to add is that we know rumor is like a wildfire. Mm -hmm. And once it is not checked, it can destroy anything. Um, rumor, either in the church, in the family, or in any organization, we need to mark out those who carry rumor. And that for every rumor that we receive, before taking any action, the rumor should be verified. Mm -hmm. And then I said, mark out those who carry rumor. When they come, whatever they are telling you, allow those people to still stay with you while the person that is being rumored against mm. invite that very fellow. I say, repeat what you have said uh -huh. before. <laughs> you see, when you try it first time, you try it second time, the it third time, again. it will not come again. Uh -huh. And that may be a very strong weapon hmm. for you to kill room, rumor in wow. that church. So, uh, the bottom line, as I'm saying, is that we should remember. Rumor carrying is a sin. Yes. And no sinner will enter the kingdom of God. Amen. When we receive rumor, it must be properly verified before any action is taken. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Honestly, I remember that analogy when we were in Nigeria. In fact, mm -hmm. that when somebody is telling you a rumor, are you sure if you can, can you say it in front of the person you're talking about? And then when, oh, Nara. <laughs> It's only between me and you. you better okay. Run, run away. That means it's not. It's, in fact, there are, there are plenty everywhere, everywhere. And these are the things that can cause the children of God not to be in we. And that is yes. why we are treating it. And the last question. Sorry, we won't be able to do all the questions. We want to um, mm -hmm. just make sure you uh, you you enjoy the few time that we have with you. So this is the last question for for us to treat today. When a member shows interest in a ministry. And members are not encouraging. What can she do? That is, maybe she wants to be a singer. She she really has the passion, and she get there, and somebody just started messing him up. You don't even know how to sing. You know, you can kill the vision. So what 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 can we do in order to help this? Because these are one of the keys that can take people from from church as well. Maybe. Where he was coming from, it was this, it was that. And by the time he got to the church, I remember um, during the time I was in Nigeria, there are some churches that don't even encourage uh, CAC student association. They will say, no, uh, you should, uh, you know, but we continue in our future. But like that, so many things, you know, things can happen. So in case this thing happens, how do we help the member to continue having that vision and bring it to pass? Uh, let's just shut and precise go to the uh mrs bello want to start uh in my own opinion uh if i have interest in uh maybe in the child ministry uh there there are committees there are there are uh leaders of that group you go to him or her and ha ask how it works nobody can shut you down if you really if you really have the will to do the work of god but in a situation whereby uh there is a a program like there is a setting that they have 
uh, it, it, it's going to take like a protocol. If it's a protocol to, you know, to, to be part of where you want to be, you just have to be patient. If that's your vision, it's going to come to reality. But you can't because you come, uh, you are like a leader of like a choir group in a church you are coming from. You can't come here to this church and want to become the head. Yeah. It will, you, it definitely is going to figure you out. Let, don't you, I, like myself, I, I just look about like when a church starts, where does the choir come from? You know, some, some, even some people, they, they are not even singers in, in wherever they are coming from. But when they come to a growing church, they just find themselves in doing what they are doing. Like, this is my responsibility. Let me try and go there and help. And with doing that, this, you, you, yourself, you start developing yourself. That is if you inspire to be something, to help in any ministry in the church. So if we look, uh, want to be a part of a, a something that has that has that is in existence in the church, there is a protocol to it. Just be patient and follow your vision. That's, that's my own that's, advice. That's great. That's great. So when you have a vision and you really want to be part of it, just take patience, patience, endurance. And humility as well. Humility. Yes. We have to add that. Do not say, oh, mm -hmm. I was the leader where I was coming mm -hmm. from. No, it's not going to work like that. There it's is a protocol to what you are, you are doing in that mm -hmm. ministry already. Awesome. Unless you want to introduce what a you new are, ministry maybe something that is not there yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Daddy? I want to yes, hear from uh, God, uh, God bless you. This question is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, quickly, I will uh, contribute uh, on three points uh, basis. Okay. My point number one, when I read this question, it reminded me of what our general of Asia taught us some years ago, which he termed the seven keys to power. Hmm. The seven keys to power. And key number one in that his message is that do everything possible to make your boss sign. Do everything possible to make your boss sign. That is your leader. Key hmm. number two is that he said, never try to outsign your boss. Hmm. And the, the way he now explains it is that when you do everything to make your boss sign, maybe you have a ministry as we are discussing do not think that you are the only one that yes. is so expert in that ministry mm. or so endowed. There must be somebody there that you have come to meet. Mm. Now, that your gift or the ministry as we are calling it, use it to make whomever is leading that area sign. That's number mm. one. Then where he said that don't outsign, don't try to outsign your boss. It means that I think, uh, my dear sister, Bimishola, you understand this, even in uh -huh. CAC. Yeah. If an ordinary pastor or an evangelist is trying to outsign his uh, district superintendent, uh -huh. that evangelist will be transferred to a remote place. <laughs> and in that remote place, in that remote place, it is unlikely uh -huh. you will be able to make use of that gift. Uh -huh. I hope you are getting me. Uh -huh. yeah. but, when, but, but when you use that, your gift, your ministry, as, as we are calling it, to make your boss to sign, he mm. will allow you to practice that gift. And before mm. you know what is happening, you will be given your rightful position mm -hmm. in the church. That is mm. number one. Number two is this area of arrogance we must allow it to die. Hmm. Number, uh, three. number three is that if you are patient enough, if you are humble and you are not arrogant and you make your boss to sign automatically, that your gift will speak for you. Mm -hmm. The gift cannot be killed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yes. Like mm. in my own area, many of my teachers, some of them, they do support me. And before you know what is happening, I allow them to lead. And before you know it, the leadership of the church will recognize that indeed, these people are called to be teachers and they will be allowed. So, and then finally, if you have tried all this, mm -hmm. because there are studies like that, you have tried all this and yet you are not allowed to make use of your gift. Remember <coughs> when Jesus Christ <coughs> sorry, was sending out his disciples, <coughs> he told them that wherever they enter and they are not welcome, <coughs> that they should shake the doors of their shoes mm -hmm. and yes. go to the next place. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mention that they will not have reached the end of the world <coughs> till he comes back. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> if you have done the right thing and yet you are not allowed to make use of it, the next thing is to go to the next place doing the right thing as we have mentioned, mm -hmm. you will discover that you'll be allowed to make use of your gift. Mm -hmm. wow. Thank Hallelujah. you very much. This is, this is so awesome. And I'm very sure yeah. so many people are writing something down. This yeah. is very, very important and I'm able to gain as well. If only we have time, we won't have, you know, deal with what we want to, we want to round up so that you can go and digest everything that we have said. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be too much. So that if it is just short, you will read it, you listen to it, and you will enjoy it and put it in your memory. So everything that we have treated today, is, I, I know has blessed every one of us. And I don't want you to stay there. If you know you are lacking one thing or the other to cooperate with your pastor, which I invited it, with the people in the church, please try and do it. And let the Lord lead you in everything. When we come together as, uni, you know, as a unified person, we'll be able to do a lot of things in the church. And that is why, you know, with you, together, we'll be able to achieve a lot of things. Thank you. I, I really bless the name of the Lord for today. And uh, I, I glorify the name of the Lord for the session that we are able to have. And I'm very sure all of you are blessed. If you have not subscribed, don't forget, subscribe to this channel. It won't hurt you. And press the notification button. So anytime we upload things, or maybe we go live, you'll be able to quickly do it. And help us to share this message to so many people. So, you know, we just started, and so many people, they don't know what we're doing. But if you can share, you know, we are doing the work of the Lord together. It's not only me. This is just evangelism. And this is the realm the Lord wants us to do it. And you can imagine, you are able to enjoy a lot of people tonight, and I really thank God for them. Thank you very much, Mommy Bello, for coming to this particular channel today. We are Thank blessed you. by your ministry, and I pray the Lord will continue to expand you, expand your ministry, expand your work in the mighty name mm. of Jesus. Thank you uh, so much. We thank God for you. We are so proud of you. And don't forget, Flavors Nigerian Restaurant is in Orlando. Give them a call. If you play back, you'll see the phone number, and you see the address. Please go and eat there. It's a very delicious <laughs> thing. The day I went there, I asked if I, I, I was eating my heart. So I can tell you that the restaurant is awesome. And I thank God for my daddy, you know, I always tell you that's my father, that's my brother, he's, he's, he's my paddy. So we thank God for you. At any time we call on you, you're always there. Even Nigerian situation, no Nepal, nothing at all. He still struggled to do a lot of things. You see now, Nepal has took him out again. But now we're standing, we appreciate him. I know he will play back and uh, we appreciate him and we thank God for his life and for his ministry. And this is where we're going to round up the whole thing today right now. And... Um, um, because it's not here. Uh, okay, it, it's back. So we thank God for you, sir. We bless the name of the Lord for the wonderful thing the Lord has been using you for. I've known you for a real Christian and you know what you believe. And I really thank God for your life. And I pray the Lord will continue to energize you in everything you do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, by special grace of God, next this particular week that we are in, I'm going to drop... Um, there are some people that said something about the power of we, you know, I just, I went around, so I'm going to put everything together and I will release it on Wednesday by special grace of God. And next week will be my tip, maybe your tip of the, of, the, of the month. So, you know, that is always what we do. So my own tip, that is all like a summary of everything that we have done for this month. And next month is going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be a special month. It's going to be a special dedication 
to certain people and you know you you will you bear with me that it is time to celebrate so without wasting time let me ask daddy to round up for us bless us as we round up now thank you sir Itara Kovages, we thank you for tonight. Blessed be your name for the wisdom that you are giving unto us. Thank you. Jesus. And we also bless your name for those that have passed tonight's messages. We thank you for what you have already used these messages for, that you will use it even to propagate your word and to bring up your churches on earth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we commit into your hands the proprietor of this program. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to be with her. You will uphold Amen. her. You will see her. You will provide wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the resources that she needs to, to continue with this good work she has started. Thank you, mighty Father, even for my sister and all those that had this uh, program tonight that will continue to uphold us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank in you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. So Amen. this is how we're going to start. Continue reading your Bible. Be more fervent in the Lord. You know, keep rapturable. Do the things of the Lord and everything you need to correct yourself as a church member. Please do. And next week, I will see you. Bye for now. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow.